one activity that really has to be seen to be believed, takes place in the north of Thailand and does so annually. It's a real competition. It's elephant polo. <laughs> and it's surprising just how light on their feet they can be. The elephant population at the Anantara Resort in Thailand's Golden Triangle lead a rather good life in the general care of the resort's management. They're here by design and are the living proof of the hotel's motif. Visitors are delighted by their presence. And on some occasions can see the elephants not only at play, but playing elephant polo. This is final practice for the season of competition. And the activity must always be sanctioned by the spirits that inhabit both jungle and beast. In Thailand, the elephant has featured in the building of the nation over many centuries. But now, with mechanization, of course, a lot of their heavy work is done and their numbers are in decline, making this occasion an elephant polo day at the Anantara Resort in Chiang Rai, all the more important because many of these very elephants are normally found begging on the streets of big cities throughout Thailand, with their owners, of course, just for an existence. Today, being so special, has received not only a blessing from monks, but also has seen the presence of quite elderly men who once captured these elephants, or elephants like these, in the jungle. It was a great profession and an honored one, and they are here today to give it their special blessing too. The formal blessing is quite elaborate. The elephants participate in the knowledge that a feast follows. Polo play itself is set for the latter part of the day and was announced with a big parade leading to the pitch. While a number of teams with international credentials were to appear during the week, the meeting was launched with two dream teams drawn from all the visiting players. He's got all the time in the world. That ball is rolling. James, where were you when you had this initial idea that polo could be played on elephant back? Well, I was in a bar in St. Moritz oh. because I used to drive bobsleighs and I rode the Cresta and everything. And I met this man, Jim Edwards, who owned all these elephants in Nepal. And I just thought, well, these elephants have got to learn to play polo. So I sent him a telegram saying, arriving April 1 with long sticks, have elephants ready. And whether he believed it was a joke or not, but he did have elephants ready, and that was in 82, and he only had two teams, and now it's grown and grown. <laughs> so elephant polo is no joke after all these years. No, I mean, you, you, everybody thinks it's a joke, but you'd be surprised, once we get on these elephants, we want to win. Everybody wants to win. Yes, yes. It's not just mucking around when you get on them. Now that you've done so much of it, would you say they are manoeuvrable at all? Well, obviously, as you see, we have somebody driving them. Yeah. So a lot is to do with your communication between you and the driver. If you ever fall out with that driver, you'll never get anywhere. So you've got to be terribly nice to him and tell him he's terribly good, regardless if he's not. <laughs> but there's a big uh, language problem here, isn't there? Yes. I mean, I don't. around that? We don't. <laughs> you tap them very nicely and you say they're terribly good and everything else, and they smile and go where you want them to. Yeah. <laughs> so you, the player, of course, has to be equipped with a, a really long mallet and hopefully hit the ball. Some of them go to nearly twice the size of a normal polo stick from horse polo, mm. yes. Mm. And it does make things more difficult. And it also makes it more difficult when you don't control the elephant. Yes. But it's great fun, <laughs> because I play a lot of horse polo, and this is why I decided mm. to do this. So, uh, do you sort of live in this, this, this part of oh, Asia? Oh no, I come from Scotland. <laughs> Which, if you think of it, is a mad thing that a nation game is invented by a Scotsman, but that, that's life. <laughs> <laughs> Others in the picture were teams from TAT, Amazing Thailand, and Tickle and the Ivories. Oh, great fun, very close, and I think the handicapping was just about right. <laughs> if you have to give them too many goals, you know, <laughs> all, they're all polo players. <laughs> and here, I, I'm only an ex-polo player, you know. Oh! oh. 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 He is truly a legend. They're probably half my age. No? <laughs> All of them. All of them. Mine too. What's the yeah. point? But you look ready, you look ready for a shepherd. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. Very nicely done. One more. There you go. Excuse me, Jeffrey. How do you get to be a, a London Nelly? Uh, well, I'm their manager, <laughs> so I'm, I'm giving them all the tactics and everything. Oh, I see. They and they actually they came to um, 
to Sri Lanka to play for the first time, and uh, I organised a polo in Sri Lanka. So that's, oh, well, that's they're the eternally reason. grateful. Yes. <laughs> Are the London Nellies nervous? That's all I want to know. We're quietly confident. Quietly, quietly optimistic. Confident. Optimistic, yeah, yeah. No, we're Aren't shitting ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Go to it. Swear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tails. I, know, I thought we got to choose. Tails it is. Okay, yeah. we're going to go for F element. Okay. Thank you. The London Nellies found themselves in serious competition with a team of very tall and able European players. But unfazed at least showed that elephant polo is a sport for both ladies and gentlemen. David, what is the secret, do you think, to playing elephant polo successfully? Well, everybody goes out there thinking they're going to hit the ball better than everybody else. But it's not just about chasing that little ball. It's about teamwork, coordination, tactics, training, uh, knowledge of the uh, opposition, knowledge of the ele elephants, and working together as a team. Communication is very important on the field. You've got to be able to tell each other where you are, what you want, who's going forward, who's staying where they are, who's going into the goal area. You're only allowed one. And the same at the bully off. You have one only from each team in the circle. So it's going to be a foul if you go to the wrong place. So you must communicate. As regards hitting skills, that comes. You've either got it or not, and it comes as part of the game. Mm. But when you think about it, this is a dogfight on elephants. It's like the Battle of Britain in the sky, but the closing speeds may be a bit slower, but there's just as much maneuvering and turning and burning, and people are going forward and backwards. The spectators look at the action, but there's lots going on. It's like a game of chess, too. Mm -hmm. You've got to put your troops, if you're the general in the middle, the captain of the team, you've got to put your troops in the right place at the right time, ready for a pincer movement, ready to advance or uh, reverse in defence. You have to communicate all of that via the mahout to the elephant as well, don't you? That's a bit tricky. That's great because uh, there's this other dimension that you have a mahout who doesn't speak your language, you don't speak his. Mm. There is actually uh, some translation on the shirts of the mahouts, which helps. So you've got to encourage the mahout, never criticize, encourage, and he in turn will encourage the elephant to go in the right direction. And things change all the time. So you're going forward, you then want to stop, go the other way, turn back. So it's constant. What we see out here is not quite as intense as what is actually going on in there. Mm. I suppose you've had doubters who've been won over to this form of polo, have you? Well, a lot of people come here thinking it's just um, a load of... Um, Tosh, but they find out that it's actually a sport and it's registered as a potential Olymp Olympic sport. Even that. Yeah. And I think it's an ancient game involving ancient skills with a lovely ancient elephant. Um, these elephants are the sole survivors of many, many types of elephant that existed within the last two or three hundred years. And these are the last sole survivors. And if this game doesn't highlight their plight by exposing them to the public, through the games, then um, it's a sad day for the elephant. They're getting something to do now. There's no logging in Thailand. It's banned. It gets something useful to do other than just the tourist rides. So they're lovely creatures. They're trained well. They enjoy the game. It gives them a, a bit of uh, a change from their normal routine. And uh, the players all come together from all over the world with the world's press here showing the world what a wonderful creature this is. And in the idea of sport, it's like the, uh, in the way, it's like the Olympics because it brings that spirit, that international spirit together. And um, the beneficiary in the end is hopefully going to be the elephant. To view more of my videos or to contact me about perhaps participating in your projects, please visit rodmcneil.tv.